Hello and welcome to the African Utility Week studio. I'm Ashley Teron, content editor of ESI Africa. And joining us this afternoon, we have Tom Bleese, President of the Science Council for Global Initiatives. Welcome, Tom. Thank you for joining us. Hey, my pleasure. How's, how's the week been for you so far? Uh, it's been terrific. Uh, you know, I, I was here in South Africa in November and um, doing basically nuclear power education for the public. And um, I got really interested in, in Africa's plan to build uh, almost 10 gigawatts of nuclear power plants. And I thought that it's, it's helpful if the information that they're getting about what type of systems uh, they might want to build, uh, if they'd get some of that uh, uh, advice and consultation from people who weren't trying to sell them nuclear reactors. Um, and I'm, I'm the president of a nonprofit organization. It's basically a think tank of mostly scientists. And, uh, and I, I was hoping that I could talk with some policymakers here and kind of give them a broad overview, not only of what's available today, but what's coming around the corner. So, uh, so it's been good. Um, the, the conference here has given me an opportunity to network with, meet a lot of new people, and things will go on from here. Can you elaborate a bit for us? Um, but just tell us more about some of the associated myths around nuclear. About the what? The myths around nuclear. Oh, the myths around nuclear power. <laughs> oh, wow. Uh, well, there's a movie about that called Pandora's Promise, and we just did a screening of it here, um, and we're going to be doing other screenings. Uh, one, of the, one of the big things that people worry about is nuclear waste. They say, you know, this is a problem that they call it the million-year waste problem. Um, and they say, as long as we don't have a solution for this, we shouldn't build nuclear power plants. Well, there is a solution for it. We know how to make the million-year waste problem a 300-year problem. And, uh, and even at 300 years, you end up with a waste product that's inert. It's basically like glass or ceramic, and you can just bury it. Um, people don't know about it. Um, People think that uh, nuclear power plants, if they have an accident, can explode like a nuclear bomb, which is not true. Um, and, and the newer designs are so safe that, uh, that they're virtually foolproof you can walk away from them if they have a nuclear accident. So uh, they operate at atmospheric pressure. Um, and, and these are designs that are either able to be built right now or will soon be built within the next five years. So. Um, so there's a lot of opportunity um, to, uh, for, for Africa to take advantage of these new and super safe technologies uh, in the future. But even the ones that are being offered right now, um, and, and it makes sense to get started building the ones that are available now, um, they're extraordinarily safe. Uh, and I, I would encourage people to uh, look up the movie Pandora's Promise if they can't come and see one of the screenings that we're doing. We're doing some in Elizabethtown and, and Johannesburg as well. Um, <clears throat> you can find it on iTunes or probably YouTube or wherever. And what is the motivation behind Pandora's Promise? Um, <clears throat> the, uh, the maker of Pandora's Promise, Robert Stone, uh, was uh, his previous movie was about uh, the environmental movement, the rise of the environmental movement called Earth Days. And um, he, uh, he followed the path of several people who were kind of iconic figures in environmentalism in the world. And then, um, and then he was very concerned about climate change and realized that nuclear power was probably gonna be really necessary. Mm -hmm. And he had been basically anti-nuclear. His first movie was about nuclear testing. Uh, in, uh, it was called Radio Bikini. And, uh, and so after making this love letter movie to the environmental movement and he was the darling of the environmentalists, he makes a movie about nuclear power saying, hey, we need nuclear power. And so um, because he wants to deal with climate change and he sees that if you want to run modern societies uh, with clean energy, that there really isn't an option, that, that renewables, wind and solar particularly, are sim simply incapable of doing it. Mm. And in the African context, why would you say that we need nuclear? Well, because uh, you need 
uh, every society that wants to run industries and, and have reliable power needs what, what's called base load power. You need power that's, that you can call upon it at any time and it'll be there for you. Um, renewable energies, wind and solar, are just there when the wind blows or the sun shines. And there's times when the sun isn't shining every night uh, and, and also when it's foggy. Um, and there are times when the wind isn't blowing and there are times when the wind isn't blowing and the sun isn't shining. So you essentially need to have so-called backup power that's capable of producing as much energy as your society needs even at the peak moments. Um, and nuclear power can do that. So, uh, you know, you, you, can, you can try to use fossil fuels. They work fine, except there are big problems with fossil fuels even over and above the climate change issues. Um, coal, for instance, uh, the burning of coal kills uh, a couple million people a year around the world when used as directed. So, um, you know, nuclear power is far superior in terms of the deaths per terawatt hour. Um, it, it's even better than wind and solar. So, uh, because people fall off windmills and fall off roofs when they're putting so, on solar panels. Um, even including Chernobyl, uh, there, which is the only big accident that involved the death of, of people, um, nuclear power actually is the safest nuclear, uh, the safest energy source. And do we know how many direct deaths were caused from Chernobyl? Yeah, the, there were. Uh, there were studies done by the governments of Ukraine and Belarus and Russia and uh, the World Energy Organizations. Uh, and, and there were about, I forget the exact number, it's around 50. So um, not less than what the public? Well, the public, many people think there were over a million deaths, uh, but it's right around 50, I forget the exact number. Um, and, and there were some cases of, uh, of uh, thyroid cancer mm -hmm. because um, the people didn't get uh, iodine tablets soon enough. Um, but uh, those those cancers were generally treatable. So um, yeah, the, the death toll is extraordinarily small. I mean, more people die in coal mining accidents in China in a year than died in Chernobyl. Uh, so <laughs> yeah. So there's a lot of concerns around the cost and the size of developing a, a nuclear power plant. Are we seeing smaller technologies? Um, are we seeing technologies that are perhaps better handling waste, looking at the, the recycling of waste? Right, well, uh, the recycling of waste, like I said, has, has been, that's been solved. And, and the type of recycling, we actually restarted a project that had been canceled at uh, one of uh, the United States National Laboratories back in 1994. It was canceled for purely political reasons. We restarted it three years ago, and they have designed a, a commercial scale recycling plant that will recycle the, the spent fuel from all types of reactors. Um, so that's not really a problem. Um, what we're starting to see more and more now is a, a real interest in what they call SMRs, small modular reactors, mm -hmm. that can be mass produced and that can be just stacked, essentially. So, for instance, uh, one company that, that I have gotten involved with, not financially, but just from a standpoint of development, is uh, called Thorcon. They have a, a reactor design that's uh, modular. It's like a, a cylinder, mm -hmm. and uh, and it's uh, it'll produce 250 megawatts electric. Now a, a big power plant is about one gigawatt, about a thousand megawatts electric. Um, but they can just stack these. They they mount the whole power plant on a ship with two of these, so that's a half a gigawatt. And if you want a one gigawatt power plant, you just bring in two of these ships. And, um, and you don't even need anything on land. All you need is a big plug <laughs> to plug it into your grid. Are we, are we seeing that technology in Africa at uh, the moment? Well, it, the, the, the company has a plan to build the first one in about four years to start the first one. So, okay. um, but, but the design was already, uh, th this system was developed in the United States at one of the national laboratories 
and it ran for a few years. And, and this is just a, a scale up of, and not a very big scale up of that system. So um, it, it's a proven technology basically. And it, it's a matter of um, the, uh, the economics, how you uh, put the system together to make it very economical and it's going to be extraordinarily economical. Um, and, and the people who started the company are shipbuilders. Uh, they've built the world's biggest ships, so they really okay. know they're industrialists. They know about building big things and making them work. So this isn't like some fresh grad students uh, with a design on a piece of paper. So. Uh, these guys really know how to do it. And I, I think that's probably gonna be the first, the first small modular reactor that you see is probably gonna be from them. Some exciting and, new developments. And, and, and if, they, if it works as planned, um, you know, they'll be available to start buying uh, for countries like South Africa in six or seven years. So, uh, you know, when, when it comes to building nuclear in South Africa, you, you need energy now. It's a good idea to take some designs, some reactor designs that are proven and safe and start building them now. But, uh, you know, if you're talking about building 10 gigawatts, I was talking to someone last night who's involved in, in the project here and they say, well, we'll probably build three gigawatts first and then start getting money from the electricity sales and build the next three gigawatts. Well, by the time you build that first three gigawatts, these other reactor designs are probably going to be available. Mm -hmm. So uh, you may end up seeing South Africa build three big power plants and then five or six years from now be looking at these other new technologies coming online and going, oh, we want to buy those because they're way cheaper <laughs> and safer. So uh, not to say that the reactors that are being offered aren't safe. They are extraordinarily safe. They're much safer than the reactors that are in use around the world today. Um, they have passive safety systems that allow in an accident uh, the operators to just walk away and they won't melt down. Um, but you know, these other reactors are safer yet. So, um, yeah, safety is something that is uppermost in the mind of a lot of people who are against nuclear power. Um, but I think when they learn about the new type of reactors, the kind that will be built in South Africa, um, they'll, they'll be able to sleep easy at night. So lastly, just to end off, do you think that South Africa is ready for the uptake of new nuclear power? Oh yeah, very definitely. Um, now, the the policymakers and, and people involved in the program that I've talked to, they they, they don't want to be the first to do a, a design. They want to use proven designs, and sure. that makes a lot of sense, yes. right? Um, although you know there are some uh, d new designs that haven't yet been built, like General Electric has one that just got certified by the Nuclear okay. Regulatory Commission in the states. Um, that would probably be a great reactor for South Africa to build, but there's a reluctance to do that. Um, and it's understandable. You know, you, you can't afford to make big mistakes when you're talking about spending billions of dollars, you know. Or the, the trillion rand number that's being bandied about for the project, I think is about at least double what realistically South Africa can build it for. Um, as far as uh, the capabilities, uh, the the schools, the, the nuclear engineering programs at the universities in South Africa are starting to attract more and more young people. And I think what you'll see is the the trained nuclear engineers are going to be training as the plants are being built. And by the time the plants are built and operating, you're probably going to have a good knowledge base there. Uh, with young people who are new to the industry and well-trained and will be able to have really good jobs yeah, um, sure. for their entire careers. Some exciting stuff. Got some uh, very exciting things to look forward to in South Africa, I think. Very definitely. But Tom, thank you so much for joining us. It's been My an pleasure. absolute pleasure. I hope that you enjoy the rest of the show. Thanks. And uh, enjoy beautiful Cape Town. Okay. <laughs> okay. I'm Ashley Turan, reporting from African Utility Week.